Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Since our last video about the COVID-19 vaccine, there have been some major updates. On December 11th, the FDA finally issued the emergency use authorization for the Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. And on December 12th, the CDC also voted in favor of the use of this vaccine. And today on December 14th, a hospital called Northwell Health also administered its first COVID-19 vaccine ever to one of the registered nurses. So in today's video, we wanted to go over exactly what this emergency use authorization is and answer the number one question that we got asked from the last video, which is, is the vaccine safe to use? With the more recent updates, we'll definitely be able to answer this question a lot more in detail. And we'll also be addressing the question of whether or not this vaccine could cause infertility in women. So without further ado, let's get right into it. What is the emergency use authorization? In a declared um, emergency, like in the case of the COVID-19 pandemic, it's not always possible to have all the evidence that the FDA needs to approve a drug. But if there is a good candidate with good evidence to support that it could be helpful in um, diagnosing, treating, or preventing the cause of the pandemic, the FDA can issue this emergency use authorization for the unapproved drug to be used and released to the public. Um, and it doesn't mean that out of desperation, the FDA just stamps a go and puts it out there. The FDA is a government agency that was, you know, whose role is to protect the health and the safety of the general public. So when they decided to authorize the emergency use of the COVID-19 vaccine, it was after a thorough evaluation and discussion among the experts in the field. So the physicians, epidemiologists, the chemists, the biologists, and independent scientific and public health experts got together and they came to an agreement that the totality of the available data provides clear evidence that the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine may be effective in preventing COVID-19. The data also support that the known and potential benefits outweigh the known and potential risks supporting the vaccine's use in millions of people 16 years of age and older, including healthy individuals. In making this determination, the FDA could assure the public and medical community that it has conducted a thorough evaluation of the available safety, effectiveness, and manufacturing quality information. And yes, the Pfizer vaccine may not have all the data that another drug that's been FDA approved would have, but it doesn't mean that it was given an emergency use authorization on a whim. For the vaccine to have even been considered for emergency use authorization, it had to go through multiple clinical trials. So they had phase one trial to make sure that the vaccine is safe and well tolerated. And they moved on to phase two trial, um, which, has a, which had a bigger group of participants to further study the side effects and efficacy of the vaccine. And only when it was shown that it didn't pose any safety concerns, it moved on to phase three trial with thousands of participants to study, you know, to further study the adverse reactions and the efficacy. And in the case of Pfizer, it was this phase three trial that showed that the vaccine is 95% um, effective. Um, only eight out of the 17,411 people who received the vaccine ended up with the COVID-19 versus 162 of the 17,511 people who received the placebo. So it was only after they had the sufficient data on safety and efficacy that the FDA was able to issue the emergency use authorization for the Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. And even after it gets released to the public, um, the FDA, the CDC, along with Pfizer, they will continue to monitor the safety and efficacy of the vaccine. What safety data do we have so far? Now that Pfizer released the fact sheets for their vaccine, we have a little more information. So if you go to the site, cvdvaccine.com, you can get the fact sheet as a healthcare professional or as a non-healthcare professional. So let's go to the healthcare professional one and you can see that this one has 29 pages uh, versus the fact sheet for non-healthcare professionals, uh, which is six pages long. So the one for healthcare professionals does have more detailed information with clinical data and such. So let's go back to that one. Let's go to page 16 for the clinical trial portion. Um, so if you look here, you could see that the available safety data is based on the 37,586 participants enrolled in an ongoing randomized placebo-controlled international study. 18,801 received the vaccine and 18,785 uh, participants received the saline placebo and they were followed for about two months after receiving the second dose. Um, so let's go back to the other fact sheet to look at the common side effects in one glance. 
So we have injection site, pain, tiredness, headache, muscle pain, chills, joint pain, fever, injection site swelling, injection site redness, nausea, feeling unwell, swollen lymph nodes, um, and these typically last to several days. And if you want a more detailed breakdown of these adverse reactions, you could go back to the other fact sheet, um, page 17. If you look here, they broke it down to the first dose of vaccine versus placebo and the second dose of the vaccine versus placebo. And here we have for age group between 18 and 55. Um, and going down, we have the same break breakdown, but this one is for 56 years of age and older. Um, and from this chart, you can see that more people experience the side effects after the second dose than after the first dose. Okay, for now, let's go back. Um, there also have been reports of allergic reactions to the vaccine in some participants that typically occurred within minutes to an hour after getting a dose. So they had difficulty breathing, swelling of the face or the throat, uh, fast heartbeat, rash all over the body, dizziness, and weakness. Um, and if you see here, there is a disclaimer that there may not be, oh, that these may not be all the possible side effects of the vaccine because the vaccine is still being studied in clinical trials. Um, let's go back to the more detailed fact sheet. There was something I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, there was a serious adverse event that was observed. It was appendicitis. Eight participants in the vaccine group versus four participants in the placebo group have reported this. Um, but for now, they say currently available information is insufficient to determine a causal relationship with the, vac with the vaccine. So that was the more serious um, event. And then there are some non-serious adverse events that, that they um, mentioned. One of them was the swollen lymph nodes. This they said 64 participants in the vaccine group versus six from the placebo have reported it. So they say that it may be related to the vaccination. Um, and then there's Bell's palsy, which is facial paralysis. This was reported by four participants in the vaccine group and none from the placebo group. Um, but again, for now, currently available information is insufficient to determine a cause or relationship with the vaccine. So this is what we know so far based on the fact sheet that Pfizer had released about the vaccine. Um, but to prove to the public that the vaccine is safe and effective, uh, Mayor de Blasio and former presidents Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, and George W. Bush all volunteered to get the vaccine on camera when it becomes available. Will it be safe in pregnancy? So let's go back to the fact sheet and take a look. It says, available data on the vaccine administered to pregnant women are insufficient to inform vaccine-associated risks in pregnancy. So Dr. Anthony Fauci had also mentioned that uh, the follow-up study on pregnant women getting the vaccine will probably start mid to late January. Will it cause infertility in women? There was a blog post that was spreading like wildfire that the Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine will cause infertility in women. And this was based on the idea that the coronavirus's spike protein resembles a placental protein and the vaccine could eventually train our bodies to attack the placental protein thinking that it's a spike protein, thereby attacking the placenta and causing the infertility. However, let's take a look at the New York Times article. It says, but Dr. Stephanie Langle, an immunologist and expert in maternal and neonatal immunity at Duke University, pointed out that the coronavirus spike and the placental protein in question have almost nothing in common, making the vaccine highly unlikely to trigger a reaction to these delicate tissues. The two proteins share only a minuscule stretch of material. Mixing them up would be akin to mistaking a rhinosaurus for a jaguar because they were wearing the same collar. And if you look down a little bit further, um, the company Pfizer also said in an email statement that there are no data to suggest that their um, vaccine can cause infertility. And if you go down a little further, Dr. Langle also said that baseless discussions about how vaccines could cause infertility were particularly damaging to the scientifically backed effort to protect people with vaccines. So it looks like the vaccine won't cause infertility in women. 
Um, and the vaccine seems like it's relatively safe to be used in general public. And that's it for today. I hope that this video was able to answer some of the lingering questions that you had about the COVID-19 vaccine. Of course, the decision is yours. This video is not intended to impose my opinions on you. It's just to you know inform you and give you some of the updates that we have currently available. Thanks for watching. See you in our next video. Bye. Here we go now.